What is going on guys? Name is here bringing you guys a brand new video and today we're going to talk about some spicy news in the Call of Duty scene. I know this video is a little bit delayed but I actually recorded it a few times and redid it because I made sure I wanted to get all the facts from each side of the story. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so most of you guys remember that there was that clip where those two guys were talking about Looney and they basically were saying uh, a couple things that were disrespectful in his eyes, and but it was their opinion. But anyways, after that, Krim quoted it and decided to come at the Toronto Ultra a little bit. And uh, you can see on your screen here, Looney, he says, Looney makes people better around him, etc. Ultra forced their full roster of 10 to stay in Toronto in the middle of a pandemic, threatening to not pay starters or threatening to not pay non-starters if they went home. Uh, he then goes on to say, uh, despite winning the Toronto home series, leading the champs, Brack, who's never played a single match, had to fight Ultra to return home for his grandpa's open heart surgery. There's absolutely no chance he would have been subbed in. And he says there's rumors that these clowns are wanting a 50-50 prize winning split from their team next year while underpaying them. If the prize split goes up, so so must the salary. This is the exact opposite of what they're doing. One of the most anti-player organizations I've ever seen. Um, and I'm sure you guys know all these, all the, the information by now, but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about why this is very bad for the Toronto Ultra in the future. Um, but before that, let's talk a little bit more about what people were saying. Richard Lewis uh, tweets out, and if you guys don't know who he is, he's basically like a, a renowned journalist in esports. He's been around forever, and he talks about, I do consultancy work for a modest fee, but we'll give out this lesson for free. If you're a professional organization, don't use Twit longer for statements. If you're amateurish enough to do that, never, and I mean never, label your statement as the truth. And he brings up a good point. Like, you can't just tweet out saying the truth about Brack using a twit longer. It just seems a bit unprofessional. Um, to be honest, they should have released like a formal statement um, explaining what happened with them and uh, how they tried to help Brack out rather than pretty much calling him out for lying. And now let's look at the statement that the Toronto Ultra let out. They said over the past few days, Toronto Ultra's treatment of its players has been called into question and some allegations have been made that simply do not align with the facts known to us. With the facts known to us, I mean, that's just like a weird statement in and of itself. But they go on to say, we are posting the statement to provide our perspective on these false and harmful allegations. We owe this to our players, our fans, our tireless staff, and all those who care about the Toronto Ultra. Brack came to us asking to return home to be with his family at a difficult time. We, of course, alleviated him from team obligations to go home on compassionate leave. We want to be very clear that we continue to pay Brack his full salary on a compassionate leave despite the fact that we had no contractual or legal obligation to do so, so that he could be with his loved ones without financial pressure to return to his job. Some days later, he came to us to say he was now ill and indicating that he could not return to Toronto. We continued to pay him. Finally, we provided him with a very generous time period in which to provide so it produced sufficient medical documentation sustaining his illness or substantiating his illness, excuse me, sheesh, to help us understand when he might return. We subsequently learned that he had cleaned out his belongings from his residence in advance of leaving Toronto for the family emergency, indicating to us that he never intended to return to his work duties in the first place with an unwillingness to cooperate and a significant amount of compassionate leave paid. We could not reasonably keep paying Brack's salary. We are a proud organization with great people who truly care about uh, our work and each other. This has been a tough year on everyone, but at some point an organization has to stand up for itself and protect its people and its reputation. We cannot let these false statements about Toronto Ultra's conduct continue unanswered. We believe our conduct has been entirely reasonable, even characterized as generous towards Brack, and we will stand by our conduct and our people. And the last thing we need to cover uh, before we get into sort of my opinion on this is Brack's response. He then goes on to tweet, didn't plan on saying anything, but with Toronto Ultra releasing a statement, I find it necessary to come out and tell my side my story below. After going home to see my grandpa, I contracted a staph infection in my nose, and my doctor told me explicitly not to travel back to Toronto. I gave Ultra the doctor's note, seen below. You can see the doctor note there. When he left to be with his grandpa during his open heart surgery, he moved his furniture out. He lived there with his girlfriend and his dog, and they had a lot of shared furniture and pet supplies in the apartment. There was only one month left in the season, and also, keep in mind, there's one month left, and he's a substitute player who has zero chance at starting. So he moved everything out with his girlfriend's help instead of having to come back and do it by himself. Totally understandable. And he says he told Ultra about this ahead of time. There's no way to know whether that is true or not, but that's what Brack is saying. The plan was always to come back. I was willing to scrim from home and do any media duties required from home to the best of my ability. Despite my doctor's recommendation against travel, Ultra continued to withhold pay. I want to end by thanking a few people in the Call of Duty scene, including Krim. Okay, all right. So all the news out of the way, you guys are now caught up to speed on the situation. The reason that this is very bad for the Toronto Ultra 
is you don't want to form this sort of organization versus players mentality. It's, it's something that you definitely don't want. People aren't going to play for you and people are, you're going to have that added pressure and target on your back going into the next season. Um, and it's a bit weird ultra saying that they felt like they were being generous to Brack by paying him a salary when he went home. I mean, he was clearly going through a lot of things in a frustrating and confusing time during a world pandemic. And uh, in my opinion, they're better off letting him go home and enjoy his time with his family, having been prepared the entire season online scrimming and practicing for a team that he realistically never even got a shot at playing on in the starting roster. I think they owed it to him at least a little bit to allow him to go home and do these things. And the reason that this is troubling to me is because I think back to when Classic was not on the starting team for a little bit, and they were scrimming with Autumn and things like that. And that's because he wanted to go home and they weren't letting him go home. I got these from some sources that are very in tune in the scene and know what's going on. And that is just not the type of behavior that you wanna set uh, as a standard for your organization. Another thing about the Ultra, I did some digging and I asked around and uh, to the best knowledge of my sources, they are the only team that requires you to be in a single location the entire time. The rest of these guys are able to move around. They're able to go to different places. And I don't know what that has to do with maybe the border being in Canada, etc. But I don't see there really being a big issue in allowing a player to go home. You know, for Looney, for example, to go home and spend time with his fiance and his pets and be in the house that he just purchased for a little bit when he isn't on the starting roster. I just don't understand why this would be such a big issue when you can do this from home. We're living in an environment where everything is done from your bedroom. You're broadcasting from your bedroom. All the content that you're producing is realistically from your bedroom. So I don't understand why they're being so insensitive towards some of these players. I'd love to talk to some of the management or them to release a statement why they weren't allowing people to leave and go home, but it seems a bit senseless to me as their starting roster was all in the same location, they were ready to go, and the guys that had no chance of being on the starting roster were trapped in Toronto. It's just a bad precedent to set and you're gonna deter players from wanting to come to your organization in the future. I hope that Toronto can fix this going forward, but they have a lot of work to do, at least on the PR side of things. As far as what Krim was saying, obviously he was taking a lot of shots at Toronto. Um, when he refers to all these other players and stuff, the entire community talks of pro players. And as of right now, a lot of the pro players have been really against Toronto Ultra and the treatment of their players. I hope that it improves in the future, but that's all I have for you guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. Much love and appreciation to everybody tuning in. And if you didn't notice, I did get this new beast of a PC right here. And we're gonna have a video on that pretty soon. Well, much love, I'll see you guys tomorrow.